If you've been watching the videos on this channel for a while, if you've been watching me for a while or listening to me, you probably know by now that I'm often pretty deliberate and strategic about the way that I communicate in my own relationships. I'm very conscious that I want to communicate certain messages to my partner to minimize the odds of chaos and drama and divorce and all the common pitfalls of modern relationships. In today's video, I want to share an absolutely crucial message to kind of set the tone for your relationship from as early on as possible to minimize the odds, in my view, of chaos, drama, divorce, and especially irrational jealousy. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome jealousy, overcome retroactive jealousy, and often save their relationships. If you'd like more information about my products and services, or you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. If you are someone who is at all predisposed to irrationally jealous behaviors, and thoughts and feelings. If you've ever experienced retroactive jealousy, if you've ever experienced irrational jealousy in your relationship that is based on the present, it's important to give yourself and the relationship, I believe, a fighting chance at peace. And I think one of the best ways you can do that is communicate very, very early on in your relationship a few key messages that a lot of people in relationships don't communicate. And that leads to all kinds of chaos, drama, and especially irrational jealousy. So basically, one thing that I have learned, and this took time uh, over the years, but I'm glad that I learned it eventually. One thing that I've learned, and a practice that I follow to this day, is I want the overall tone of my intimate relationship to be one of mutual choice. I don't wanna be forcing anyone into doing anything. I don't wanna to try to be forcing someone to be someone they really aren't. I don't want to be forcing my partner to want the same things that I want because maybe they want different things. And as you probably know, you can't force someone to adopt a certain attitude or behavior for long, especially when it comes to any kind of choices in relationships. If you have mutual desires, if you have mutual goals, great. But if those desires and goals are not aligned, you're gonna have all kinds of problems. In terms of boundaries, I think you should have a pretty shared understanding of what exactly constitutes monogamy. This won't be necessary for everyone watching this video, but in the 21st century with Tinder and Bumble and dating apps and you know the, the kind of chaos in some ways of the 21st century sexual marketplace, relationship models are rapidly changing. Everyone's idea about monogamy, frankly, these days is a little different. So I think it's a very good idea early on in your relationship to have a real practical talk about what exactly monogamy means to you and your partner. Along similar lines, I don't think it's enough to merely have the conversation about boundaries. I think you also have to balance that out with a conversation about values. Why are you together? What would you like out of a relationship? What does a good relationship look, sound, and feel like to you? What are your shared goals as a couple? Where do you want to go in the future? What are you aiming at? What is your relationship North Star? Have a conversation about the values of your relationship, your relationship values, compare and contrast them with your partners, and make sure to balance out the kind of heavier boundaries discussion with a conversation about values. So that's very important. But beyond that, beyond the boundaries and values discussion, the overall tone of my relationship has to be based on mutual choice. I want to be here and so does my partner. And as long as that remains true, great. But if that ever becomes not true on a deep level, I'm not talking about a bad day or week or something like that, but over an extended period of time, if one of us comes to the conclusion that this is not the right choice, that we're holding each other back from something better, I want the tone of the relationship to be one of mutual trust that that will be the right thing to do. In other words, if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna be okay, my partner's gonna be okay, it's all good. The main point is just to communicate that and be able to have that conversation in as calm and mature and grounded a way as possible, rather than having all kinds of fights about it. Basically, I want my partner to know that if she wants to leave, I will be the first one to say, you know what, I'm gonna miss you, but goodbye and God bless. And this is not me trying to be cool or trying to you know, come off like I'm this cool guy who doesn't care about my partner. Of course, I love my partner deeply, I care about her deeply, but I only wanna be with someone who wants to be with me. Now, when it comes to irrational jealousy, I think one of the ways you can reduce irrational jealousy in a relationship is when you make sure your partner knows that, you know what, if you want to be with other people, if you are attracted to someone else and you genuinely want to be with that person, that's okay. I will be the first to open the door and say, God bless, and you know you can be on your way and have a great life. There's no animosity. 
Now, if my partner were to make that decision, of course it would hurt and yada, yada, yada. I'm not trying to be cool here. I'm not trying to say like this decision wouldn't of course upset me. Of course it would. But at the end of the day, again, I only want to be with someone who wants to be with me. And by communicating the message that, you know what, life happens, the divorce rate is over 50%, people break up all the time, it's a complicated world out there, anything can happen in relationships, there are no guarantees. As devoted as we are to each other right now, as much as we love each other, as much as we're attracted to each other, things happen, right? But the message I want to get across is, if things change, let me know. Rather than sneaking around behind my back, rather than doing all kinds of shady things, I want to avoid that. If my partner wants to be with someone else, I just want her to know, like, let me know as soon as possible, because that's okay. I'm not going to try to make guard. I'm not trying to gonna smother you and try to keep you and beg you to stay. I'm not going to do that. I've never done that in my life. I'm not going to start now. I'm quite okay with being alone. I'm quite okay with saying goodbye to you if that's what you need, if that's what we both decide is best. But even beyond that, if I think my partner's making a terrible decision at the time, say they, you know, fall in love with someone else and I'm devastated and all the rest, like at the end of the day, the basic truth remains the same. I only want to be with someone who wants to be with me. Now, for some of you watching this video, you might not entirely feel that way yourself in your bones. You know, you might feel a little more clinging and possessiveness towards your partner. And sometimes that takes time to work through. You know, I might be sharing a different message with you if I was recording this video 10 years ago. But let me tell you, it's a really grounding and peaceful feeling when you come to this point where you are really genuinely okay being alone. When you're genuinely okay knowing that if this relationship doesn't work out, I will say goodbye and God bless and thank you and be on my way. Breakups hurt, breakups suck. Of course, I'm not trying to minimize the pain associated with that. But at the end of the day, I know that whatever happens, I will be okay. And I want to be with someone who wants to be with me. And if you tell your partner, you know, if you fall in love with someone else, just let me know, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'll be okay with that and I'll let you go and it's all good. If you communicate this message, it's not a message that a lot of people have heard before. It might catch your partner off guard, you know, because they might be more used to people doing the mate guarding thing and begging them to stay and all the rest. But at the end of the day, I really think it's your only option to sort of make peace with the inherent instability and uncertainty of relationships in general. There's no such thing as a sure thing. There's no such thing as a guarantee. People change, feelings change. And part of the thrill of falling in love is the act of falling itself. The uncertainty, the risk, the danger is embedded in the phraseology itself, falling in love. We don't say securing in love. We don't say certainty in love. We say falling in love because it's dangerous, because it's risky. And making peace with this risk and making sure that both of you understand that, you know what, as, as into each other as we are right now, there is risk involved and how are we gonna deal with certain problems that may come up, with certain other people who might get involved, you know? Setting the overall tone for the relationship that I want the best for me, I want the best for you. If this doesn't work out, goodbye and God bless. I only want to be with someone who wants to be with me. I believe this is a recipe for avoiding so much drama and pain and heartache and all the rest. And just for the last time, it's not about trying to be cool. It's not about trying to say, oh, you can leave and I don't care. No, it's not about that. It's about, no, I genuinely want the best for you. And this is another message that it seems a lot of people have never really heard. You know, we often say, oh, I want the best for you. But sometimes when we say that, we only mean, I want the best for you insofar as it doesn't hurt me. But that isn't really wanting the best for someone. If I'm dating someone and they find someone who's a genuinely better match for them, then I want them to leave me. Go, please. I don't want to hold you back. And I don't want to be held back myself from someone who will love and cherish me the way, frankly, that I deserve. Wanting the best for someone also involves possibly losing them. But again, that's okay. That's built into the nature of loving. That's built into relationships in general. So I would say try to make peace with the inherent instability, <laughs> the inherent uncertainty of relationships. And this is a massive project, and, and some of you will struggle with this, but I think it's essential. Try to get okay with being alone, because I really don't think you can be truly happy with someone else if your main motivation for being with them is fear of loss. You know, I think you need to cultivate that sense of being totally okay, totally content on your own. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for watching this video. I know this was a lot of ideas boiled down. You know, a lot of the time when I record these videos, 
I'm just kind of going off the cuff, but I really felt like sharing this message today. And if you got anything out of this video or you'd like me to continue making videos like this, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below, leaving a comment, telling me what you think, good, bad, or ugly, I'd love to hear it. And also make sure that you're subscribed to my channel as well to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again, and I'll be talking to you again very soon.